Mental health has always been accompanied by negative assumptions. In the past, individuals with mental illness were viewed as being witches or being possessed by the devil, and the treatment for this was for them to be burnt at the stake. As the history progressed, the insane were deemed unfit to live amongst the normal people of society, and they were thus put into asylums in complete isolation from the rest of society. In such asylums, they lived in inhumane conditions. A prime example of such an asylum is the Bethlehem Asylum of London, which is also called Bedlam. Bedlam began admitting mentally ill patients from the 1300s onwards. Conditions in this hospital were as horrible as they could get. People were chained to the walls, they were put in stray jackets and left in their own filth for years and years. In the 1800s, people used to be able to pass by the asylum and pay a penny to catch a glimpse of these insane people. As you can see, the layout of Bethlehem was very linear and very compartmentalized. Each area was separated and more emphasis was given to convenience for those working there rather than as to what would work for the care of these people. These inhumane conditions were not only existing in Europe, but they were also existent in North America. In North America, the psychiatric asylums bared a very close resemblance to those in Europe, such as the one in Bethlehem. As you can see, these hospitals were also created with a very linear layout. During this time period, in the 1800s, early 1900s, manuals were created as to how exactly a mental institution should be created. These mental institutions in North America had the dark hallways that were signature of mental asylums at the time, tiny dark rooms, inhumane conditions. Psychiatric architecture manuals describe the typical and most effective layout of a mental asylum to be as follows. They stated that a mental asylum should be isolated from society. They said that a mental asylum should be surrounded by at least 100 acres of land, and within this land is the only place where patients would be allowed to move about. They also stated that they also described very many practical implications of the layout of the mental asylum. They said that the asylum should be more elevated compared to everything else in order to ensure proper drainage. They also showed how the fire escape should look in a mental asylum. How, and as you can see, again, things are very compartmentalized, very linear. The windows, as they described, should have bars on top of them, and they should not be very big, grand windows. They also described how the water pipes should be organized. They stated that the water pipes serving the same area of the institution should be arranged together, and they should pass from the cellar all the way up to the attic to allow easy access for repairs. They also stated how the kitchen, for example, should be laid out. And as you can see, this layout is very linear, very compartmentalized, and very simple. So as you can see, again, more emphasis was put on convenience. The care for mental ill would remain horrible for very many years to come until the French humanist Philippe Pinel in the early 19th century. He stated that mental patients are just like any human, other human being, and they have the same basic... In North America, the main proponent for this new humanist tradition was Dorothea Dix. In the 1960s, there was a surge of movements trying to target exactly how these new mental institutions should be designed. Everything from the floor plans to where patients and practitioners should be located relative to each other, down to where patients could rest, receive treatment, and congregate were discussed. In June 1967, the Design Feat, which is a conference held annually at Rice University to study a significant topic in architecture, wanted to target how to create a community mental health model. Each, in this conference, there were six teams of specialists to study the problems inherent in the planning of mental health centers. Each team consisted of a psychiatrist, a community psychiatrist trainee, an architect, and five advanced architectural students. Their main belief during this conference was that it is just as bad to build walls between agencies as it is to build walls between the center and the community. The architect and the mental health practitioners worked together to look at the problems that needed to be targeted when creating a new community mental health system. What they did was they tried to create a community model, a model where patients and the community could interact, where patient care was intertwined with community living. They also tried to create models where the care of patients would not involve them being confined to little rooms. 
They try to incorporate activities such as table tennis for both the practitioners as well as the patients. They try to get the patients outdoors. They wanted to create a new model that would target not only the actual treatment but also community living for mental health patients. After many hours of hard work and collaboration, these architect and psychiatrist teams came up with models of good community mental health centers. They came up with models that were less linear than the traditional models, that did not compartmentalize people as much, that allowed more interaction between, between administration and between patients. They tried creating brighter rooms, such as the adult day rooms and office blocks. They were all less compartmentalized, less linear. They were more open. They, were, they allowed for more interaction. The adult day rooms had couches that were put around in circles where people could sit around. They could talk. They could congregate. They could do things. They were not confined to these little rooms and chained up as people were earlier on in the earlier centuries. The office blocks were also more open, more inviting. For people that were, try that were coming in that needed help, such a place was much more inviting and would allow for a more therapeutic environment overall. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for the day. Tomorrow, no tomorrow.